All right, lesson 13 here. Let's go ahead and take a look. Our objective says we will multiply unit fractions by unit fractions. And we know, based off of the definition of unit fraction, a unit fraction is any fraction that has a 1 in the numerator. All right, so let's take a look here. If we look at all of the fractions that we see on this page, they all have 1 in the numerator, that top number. Okay, so reading our directions. Solve. Draw a rectangular fraction model to show your thinking. Then write a multiplication sentence. The first one has been done for us, so let's go ahead and look. A reads half of one-fourth pans of brownies. So we have half of one-fourth pan of brownies. And we know that that's equal to one-eighth pan of brownies. Now let's take a look at their rectangular model. We had the whole. It was split into four parts. One, two, three-fourths. One fourth is shaded in the light gray here. And then we drew our half by dividing our whole into half horizontally. And we took the bottom half of that one fourth. And we darkened that in with the black there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at B. So we know we have half, and I'm going to write this out as my multiplication sentence. Half of is going to be my multiplication, one third. So half of one third, if I multiply that out, one times one is one, two times three, six. So now my answer is going to be one six pan of brownies is going to be my answer. Now let's go ahead and get our rectangular model here. Draw our vertical lines. We know that we're going to take half. We always said we're going to go with our second factor first. So factor times factor. I'm going to make my thirds. Two lines vertically gives me three parts. Now let's go ahead and shade in one of those parts. So that's my one-third. Now I want to take half of that one-third. So I'm going to go ahead and use my horizontal line tool here. Half. So now my one-third is split into two parts. Half of that would be this bottom portion here. So remember, let's take a look here again. My one-third was my orange. That's one-third. That's supposed to be three. Use that. And then I have my half of my one-third, which gave me this part here, which was my one-sixth. All right, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One out of six is my answer for our final product. Let's take a look at C here. A fourth of one-third. You know that that's going to be one times one is one. Four times three is twelve. So we have our... You know, this is our one whole. Same thing here. This whole thing was one whole. Now we have one third pan of brownies. So we're going to take the one third. You know that if we have two vertical lines, it was three equal parts. And I'm going to shade in one third. So we have our one third. That's one, two, three thirds will be a whole. We shade it in one. That's our one third right there. Right there, okay? And I'm going to put one third underneath. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take one fourth of the one third. So to get my fourths, I need three horizontal lines. Three horizontal lines give me four parts. I'm going to do one in the middle. And then each half and half to get my fourths. And now I'm going to shade in one fourth. We're going to make that blue here. Our one fourth is going to be shaded in blue. And that's one fourth of the one third. This will be my one twelfth. It's right there. You notice I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's one twelfth is the answer. It's one fourth of one third. Let's take a look at the next problem, D. I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's go ahead and multiply it. Now this is a little bit different. If you notice, our denominators are the same. So we're going to have one sixteen. But it doesn't matter whether we go our second factor first or our first factor first because they're the same, right? It's like if I said, and I'm just going to give you a quick example, two groups of three versus three groups of two. So this is three of two. So that's one, two, three. If you have three tables of two versus two tables of three. If somebody was asking you to set up at a cookout, you wouldn't say, well, it's the same thing. They both equal 6. But look at the difference. You have two tables here that equal 6, and you have three tables here that equal 6. 
It's distributed differently. This is three of two, and this is two of three. So the same thing here. Because it's one fourth of one fourth, it doesn't matter, no matter how you set it up. So let's go ahead and erase this and take a look. So I have one fourth of one fourth. I'm going to make my vertical lines first, and we know it's going to be fourths, because that's what my second factor's denominator is four. So it's fourths, and I'm going to shade in one because my numerator is one. All right. So I like to highlight the color just to represent. That's my one fourth. This is one out of four. One, two, three, four. This whole thing would be four fourths or one whole. I don't have a whole pen or whatever we're talking about. If we're talking about a Hersey bar here, I don't have a whole one. I have one piece out of four. Now what we're going to say is, well, we're going to take this fourth and divide it by four. So we have a fourth of a fourth. So we're going to take our horizontal line side to side. Say, let's go ahead and make it blue here for consistency. So that's halves, and each half and half will give us our fourths. So one out of the 16 will make this our final answer here. So now that's our fourth of our fourth, one fourth. That's the one fourth right there, but we're concerned with this one sixteenth because we had our final fourth here. Horizontal fourth, and this is our vertical fourth. But those two fourths meet is this sixteenth right here. That one sixteenth. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We did a multiplication. Four times four, like we said, is our sixteenth. We know unit form always going to be one in the numerator. When we multiply one times one, we have one. Denominator, well, I know that's going to be two groups of six. So two times six is 12. So I know it's going to be one six. Remember, I'm taking one half of the one six. So what do I have first? I have one six. I have to have the one six because I can't take half of it unless I have the one six first. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Think about that. I have to have the one six. Five lines give me six, one in the middle, and two on each side of that middle. Not perfect, but we'll take it. So now I'm going to shade in my 1-6. Let's go with yellow. There's my 1-6. Remember, this is my whole, which equals 6-6. Six, six. So that's my one whole. I don't have a whole. I only have 1-6, so it's 1-6. And now I'm going to say, well, let's take half of that 1-6. So I know it's going to be somewhere around there, but just to make it um, nice and straight, I'm going to use my horizontal line tool. Go to about the halfway point and cut it right in half. I know that this here, one half, this whole bottom is one half, but if we're talking about just one half of the one six, it's just this part here. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So one out of twelve. That's my one half of one six. It's half of the yellow. I needed to have the yellow first before I can take the half of the yellow. That's why we had to draw our one six first on our rectangular fraction model. So now it's asking us to do the same thing with two other models. We have three of one fourth and then we have one third of one fourth. So I changed it up a little bit here. If you notice I have three blue rectangular fractional models and one red. I'm going to represent the three times one fourth on the blue and the one third times one fourth on the red. So taking a look here, we know that we have one fourth. But we have three times one fourth. So that would be three of one fourth or three groups of one fourth. And what we're going to do is just highlight here. Each one is going to have one group of one fourth, two groups of one fourth, and that is my three groups of one fourth. So I know that I'm going to write it out here three times one over four 
is equal to three fourths. So that one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth. Whereas if we said we had one third of one fourth, so now we have our one fourth. If we go ahead and shave that one fourth in, remember now this is my hole. This right here is my one fourth. And now I'm going to take one third of my one fourth, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Take my horizontal line tool. I need a third, so I'm going to split this into three parts using two lines. I thought that was red, but okay, we'll deal with it. So now I have one, two, three parts. My fourth has been divided into three equal parts. So now I can take one third of my one fourth. Let's go ahead and shade that in. That right there is my one third of my one fourth, which is also equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one twelve. So that's my whole one third, and this is my one third of one fourth. It's important to notice that when I'm putting one third here, I'm not talking about this blue box that I just shaded in, this blue square right here. I'm referring to the whole one bottom one third. That's my one third. But they're not asking me for one third of a whole. They're asking me for one third of one fourth. So this is my one fourth here. And this is one third of one fourth. Just that one box, which is equal to one twelfth. All right. One half of Isla's workspace is covered in paper. One third of the paper is covered in yellow sticky notes. What fraction of Isla's workspace is covered in yellow sticky notes? So we want to draw a picture to support our answer. So we know that we have one half is covered in paper, and one third of the paper is covered in yellow sticky notes. So we, we answer one or two questions. Is it one third, excuse me, one half of one third, or one third of one half? 50 50 chance. I want you to stop and think about it and tell me what it is. Hopefully you chose correctly and this gives it away right here. One third of the paper. I know that I can replace the paper with one half. So it's going to be one third of one half. I'm going to go ahead and solve first. Unit fraction, so I know one times one is one. For my numerator, three times two is six. For my denominator, I'm going to quickly draw a picture using my second factor first. Remember, factor times factor equals product and a multiplication problem. So my second factor first, my one half. So I'm going to take my whole and I'm going to make a vertical half first. Let's go ahead and put that, uh, put in our whole. That's my one whole. This is my half. Then I'm going to shade my half in. All right, so that's one half of the workspace is covered in paper. Now we know that one third of the paper is covered in yellow sticky notes. So let's see if we can split this into thirds and then we're going to put our yellow sticky notes in. So we have the yellow sticky notes on one third of the one half. Now remember this bar here, this whole thing, the bottom third represents a third of the entire workspace. But we're not talking about a third in the entire workspace. We're talking about a third of the half. So we're only talking about this right here. And that's going to be equal to one six. All right. Next, a marching band is rehearsing in rectangular formation. One fifth of the marching band members play percussion instruments. One half of the percussionists play the snare drums. What fraction of all the band members play the snare drums? So we're saying one half of the percussionist. We know that the percussionist is equal to one fifth of the band. So it's going to be one half of one fifth. You should notice right away that that's equal to one tenth, but it asks us, oh, it doesn't ask us to draw. So we don't have to draw. You could stop right there. You would get a hundred percent for that, but I'm going to draw one anyway. I'm going to move quickly here. 
Test first, and four lines give me five parts. Perfect. We'll go take it. Go ahead and label our hole. And label our fifth. Now let's shade in our fifth. This represents the fifth of the marching band that play the percussion instruments. And now we're going to say, well, half of those percussion instruments are snare drums. So let's go ahead and take our half. So this bottom portion will be half of the entire band, but we're not looking for half of the band. We're only looking for half of the fifth. That's the one half. But we're concerned with this here, which is our one tenth. One and ten. Perfect. Hopefully this helped. Go ahead and oh, we got another problem. We thought we were, we're done. We're not done yet. Let's go ahead and finish this last problem. Maria is designing a bed spread for her grandson's new bedroom. Two thirds of the bed spread is covered in race cars. The rest is striped. One fourth of the stripes are red. What fraction of the bed spread is covered in red stripes? So we know that this one fourth of the stripes and two thirds of the bed spread. They're asking us what fraction of the bed spread is covered in red stripes. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this one's a little tricky here because it says that the bed spread, we're going to look at the bed spread. Two thirds of the bed spread are covered in race cars. So two out of three, these are going to be race cars, right? It said the rest is striped. So we're only looking at this one third that's striped. It says one fourth of the stripes are red. So we know that we have one fourth of one third. We know that it's going to be one twelfth. I'm not going to try to freehand my rectangle here. I'm going to use my rectangle tool here. And we know we have one third of the best spread that's remaining. That's striped. Remember, it said two-thirds were cars, so that means the leftover, the one-third, is striped. So let's use our vertical line tool. So this is the bed spread, and I try to draw a rough draft up top, so don't judge me. I'm not an artist. So this is the race cars here. I'm just going to put them on the other side here. So these two are going to be the race cars. My one-third is going to be my stripes. It says the rest are striped. So here's my one-third. Put in our hole first, and then we want to put in our one third. And now we say, well, of that one third, one fourth is red stripes. So let's go ahead and go back to our line tool, horizontal line now. We know that it's four, so we're going to split it in half. We want to split each half in half to get our fourths. And that's how our it's going to look. One thing I forgot to do was shade in my third. Let's go ahead and shade in our third. That was our one third. And then we said, well, one fourth. Let's change that to red. One fourth is red. So that's going to be our red section right there. One fourth of one third. One, it said one fourth of the remaining, right? One fourth of the stripes. So here's all the stripes. One fourth is red. One fourth of the stripes red. So we have orange stripes here, and then we have our one fourth of the stripes, which are red. All right, up here, this was a just a tape diagram type. So I would prefer that you stick to the rectangular fractional model. This was just more of a generic tape diagram that I was just doing to kind of to clear this up in my head. All right. So this is what your answer would look like doing the way that we've been doing all lessons. Please go through this. This is the entire problem set. Five pages of notes, one through five. Next, we're going to be moving on to something a little more difficult. We're not going to be using that numerator as one. Just to give you a hint, that's what lesson 14 has to offer. Please make sure that you ask any questions in class or in the chat, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any difficulties. I'll do my best to help you. Thank you so much.